So let's talk about optimizing CFU counts in probiotic ferments. All right, so first and foremost, a CFU is a colony forming unit of live, so viable cells that can actually multiply. A CFU is not going to count dead bacteria or dead microbes. So a CFU is all microbes, so that includes bacteria, uh, but yeast and fungus, and it, it includes all of the microbial community that can be present on like an agar plate or that can be present in a colony that we are multiplying and amplifying through a lab setting. All right, so here is my first big statement of the video. When you are doing CFU units, you are only allowed, scientifically speaking, within like laws and literature, to only do the CFUs per milliliter or per gram. Everything must be based off of a CFU unit per gram or per milliliter. If you are doing anything regarding CFU counts and you're putting that forward, it is, first of all, it needs to be scientifically accurate and there needs to be literature, papers, proof of what you are claiming. And then next, so every single time you have a supplement and you were to look up this brand, they would be able to provide legal documentation stating that they have the correct amount of CFUs per supplement, uh, capsule, tablet, etc. All right, so... If I want to optimize CFU count, here is what I need to know. The potential of the medium that I'm using, if I'm using milk, how many doublings can I expect to optimize my CFU count? If you are aiming, and secondly, if you are aiming for a, spe for a specific amount of CFU units, which can be helpful, how many CFU units would you want to be aiming for? Now, I'm going to just be very plain with you. There's a reason why when you take a supplement that it is marketed and that it is the professionals, the masters, the people who have mastered the art of making a probiotic supplement have done the research before us. We are, we are home fermenters. Uh, they know what they are doing. And, you know, the reason why it's popular is because it's effective. The people, so when you look at, for example, an l ruteri type of uh, supplement, it's going to say 2.10 to the 8th CFUs per, per tablet. And so the reason why it says 2 is because you're having two individual microbes. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because these amounts are good already you more is not better if i tell someone you need 120 grams of protein per day and they come back and they say i'm eating 300 grams of protein i'm gonna say you're doing it wrong more is not better better is better 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 and smart application of microbes in the diet is a better application of what it is that we should be doing. And so what that means is that when we go in the traditional sense, why is yo why, <laughs> why is yogurt still popular? It's been around for thousands of years. It's because a cup of yogurt has, is going to have a certain amount of bacteria in it, a certain amount of microbes in it, in that specific portion size that we have grown up and we are used to, uh, you know, that portion size that we're seeing, that is the right amount that you should be having. You don't need to be eating a gallon of yogurt, you know, do whatever you want, but you don't need to be eating a gallon of yogurt today to have this exponential amount of microbes in your gut. You need to be doing, it's better to be consistent and to have regularity and to have a, con a more consistent flow through the gut rather than having this like torrential downpour of microbes within the gut microbiome. And when someone talks about the importance of having higher amounts of microbes within a diet, yes, I agree. High amounts is great, but having a control, but having a variety of microbes is also incredibly important. When you sit down, and so I'm going to use the more Asian countries as my example, when you sit down at a table, they're going to have a wide variety of like pickled foods, fermented foods, you know, this and that, and they're going to have 
you know, more of a wider variety of foods that have a wide variety of microbes. When I talk about, you know, introducing microbes into the gut for the first time, I'm gonna say, try yogurt. It's gonna be, it's a first easy step for someone. But for someone that's trying to have a more mastered or a more full potential of a microbial profile, when you, so when you go into my fermentation logbook, available on my channel, uh, you will see that I broke up the microbes into four different categories. You're going to have categories of lactic acid bacteria. You're going to have acetic acid bacteria from vinegars. Then you're going to get yeasts from more types of like breads, like, like, homemade sourdough bread, which would be a common staple on the on the dinner table. And then you'd have molds. So yes, molds are important for the gut microbiome. And the molds would be like cheeses, or it would be like uh, natto, or it would be, and you would have this wide variety of microbes. And I would say the variety of microbes is more interesting. And sometimes, so I will go, and so here's my master class takeaway. If you are trying fermented foods and yogurt microbes are feeling underwhelming, my next recommendation for you would be to go and explore other ferments, such as a ginger bug, such as a uh, sourdough bread, such as, and you know, please don't freak out about me recommending sourdough bread. There's a reason why it is so popular. Uh, sourdough bread, you would go into like natural wines, natural beers, natural kombuchas. You would make, please, if you have never had actual homemade vinegar, it will change, it will change, it will change your life. Uh, a soda. Uh, why do you think the French are so... When I go to the farmer's market, guys, the amount of cheese I see blow your mind. Uh, I love almost all of it. I'm getting better. But having the variety of microbes, I think, is more interesting than taking one specific microbe and just exploding it in CFU counts. What is the CFU unit that you are optimizing and are you actually being beneficial? Maybe you don't need, and you're optimizing CFU units, maybe you don't need more of one specific one, but maybe you just need a better variety. Do higher CFU units create a better therapeutic effect? Like all things in this world, majority of things in this world, there's a bell curve. And so when you look at a CFU unit, you're going to have your optimized section up top. And then you're going to have, you know, when you start doing too much, if you do too many uh, microbes, you may get bloating, you may get digestive distress, it may be too much and your body can't handle it. But then also on the other end, if you're not doing enough, you just might not get any benefit. And so that is always why when I tell people that if you're starting a probiotic protocol, you may want to start small, build your way up, but then don't be fickle. If you think that this genuine bacteria will actually help you, then please increase the dose until you have found a benefit. Or if you have said, I've done this for quite a long time, I've not seen a benefit, this one might not be the right one for me. But these guys, these researchers, you know, that make these supplements, they have optimized them already to what is optimal for the gut microbiome. And so if anything, I would say more frequently, so instead of having just one per day, you'd maybe have, you know, one morning, afternoon, and then evening, and that would be a more consistent flow. And that might be your way of getting a higher CFU unit per day. And that at the, you want that bottom line at the end of the day to be important. Not necessarily that torrential downpour at lunch, that's not going to, I wanna say that's not going to, going to do much, but you wanna be mindful about your consistent change of the gut microbiome over time. Because the gut microbiome, I will remind you, is dynamic. If it has a downpour, it will clear it eventually. But having a consistent flow into the gut, you can have, you have a better chance of the interesting microbes taking hold in the gut where you're wanting it to go. There are studies out there that have noted that there is a minimum effective dose of about uh, greater than 10 to the 9th CFU units per day. Next, so what is the minimum amount of CFU units required to see a beneficial health impact? And this is what I found online. 
outlining that you need at least 10 to the ninth per day in order for you to see a benefit. Next, what are the typical CFU counts in common fermented foods? So for yogurt, milk, kefir, sauerkraut, kimchi, kombucha are the values that I found. If you find something else, great, send it over and we can, we can talk, you know, add in the comment section below, but this is what I have found. And so what you will want to pay attention to is the natural amount that is possible in these types of uh, mediums, whether they be vegetable mediums or milk mediums or whatever. And then next, what you would see is how these traditional fermented foods, these CFU units, how they compare to modern probiotic CFU units and why there's a difference between you eating an actual yogurt cup and you being able to swallow a small size tablet. You know, they have about similar amounts of colony forming units in their portion size. Also do keep in mind that in our like more dynamic, uh, super long culture list, that all of these guys are not going to make it past the stomach acid. And so that they bump up that number in order to reflect that they're not going to survive and that they're adding a lot in so that hopefully by the time it gets to your gut microbiome that it actually does something and there's something left for the gut microbiome to use. But in any case, you should know that all home fermented foods are going to have the most strain diversity and the most strain variability in population. We are not working in a lab. You cannot expect lab perfect conditions uh, every single time. Please lean, lean into the fact that we are fermenting at home and take that in stride and say, this is wonderful. I'm supposed, I'm, this is supposed to be the art of fermentation, learning and applying science how we can, but not being frustrated if you're not getting the same amount of cell counts that you're wanting. You know, you would say, oh, maybe I, maybe I'm not getting you know, enough CFU units in my small amount, but instead of eating maybe a half cup, maybe I eat a full cup. That's so easy. You have two half, you have either one full cup su serving or two half cup servings per day. That's so easy. It's helping you understand the application of smart probiotic, smart microbial influence into the gut microbiome. But then I would say, please don't be short-sighted about the marketing that has been done that has sold you on a certain type of a probiotic because you know they are good uh, but don't be close-minded to the fact that a homemade vinegar is still a very powerful thing to have you know when you go and you watch the studies be developed about there was this one study about natto being helpful for those that live in uh, this like radiation plant or something. It was from, from a while ago, but actual homemade natto was beneficial all on its own and they didn't require this special probiotic. So yes, these have their place, but, but no, that actual home fermented foods are still powerful, which is why, you know, we're trying to do this beautiful mix of modern probiotics and ancestral fermented foods to get a to get a mix. But if you're feeling stuck and you're wanting variety, maybe you try uh you know a different fermented food that you've not had in a long time and then you apple then you apply that and you say, oh am I feeling am I feeling better? Etc. Also another thing to remember is that when we're looking, so here we have two strains of one microbe, albuterai, but when you go into milk kefir, you're going to have this incredibly diverse community of microbes that are present. And that diversity, you know, in science, it's hard for us to apply two different things and pull one benefit. You apply one microbe and you get one or multiple benefits out of it because you can have that one variable that can be measured. But if you add in too many variables, it's hard for us to say, oh, we got this benefit because it's like, well, where did that benefit come from? Was it for this, from this lactic acid bacteria? Was it from, you know, this or that? And, and it's hard to know and understand that, but we have eyes and we can see that the people that are drinking milk kefir in the Russian mountains from, you know, you know, way back when, they have a long life expectancy. And there's a reason why people that drink milk kefir live a long time. And so even if science can't catch up, I do want to say, pull your head out of the research and look around. 
what are the long living communities? What are they doing? Uh, are they are they eating kimchi every day? Are they are they having yogurt? You know, I know some people might not enjoy the sourdough bread type of aspect from the gluten and you know all these things. But people in France live a long time, or people in uh, sourdough consuming communities live a long time, and so there's something to be said about having the presence of a fermented food and the postbiotics, also the microbes present, but the postbiotics as well in the diet. And so, and so what I'm, what I'm advocating for here is what is it that I'm looking for at the end of the day? Uh, you know, ha we all want to be healthy. We all want to have vitality. And where are these vitality characteristics found? Communities that have fermented foods and maybe a variety of them and they have a good lifestyle. And so, so you want to take that and you want to not say, oh, please, please, individual little probiotic, save my life or I'm doomed without... That's not how that works. And, and you know, so you want to pay attention to that mindset that you have as you go and you apply it to you know, trying to influence your gut microbiome so that you feel better. So what is my big takeaway from optimizing CFU units in your probiotic ferments? Do higher CFUs have more health benefits? Yes, up to a point, there's a bell curve. More is good up to a point, but having a torrential downpour is not necessarily better. First and foremost, you'd want to pay attention to the amount that you're having at the end of the day. You want that daily bottom line number to be appropriate for your goal and not have just one meal be this, you know, exponential amount only one time. More regularity is more interesting in the gut microbiome. Next, you want to keep in mind the interesting dynamic between CFUs in a probiotic and the natural CFUs that we're finding in already fermented foods. You want to apply that to what we're actually doing traditionally. You know, when we go into cultures that live a long time, what are they doing? And they're, eat, they're eating a wide variety of fermented foods. And so you can get your high amount of CFU units through eating more fermented foods or a greater variety of fermented foods. Both solutions are great, but only consuming a probiotic, I think you may be selling yourself a little bit short. And I think that having this in addition to an actual French yogurt or a Bulgarian yogurt or maybe a milk kefir or, you know, maybe some actual like cottage cheese, having there be a fermented food also in your diet, I think is a great synergistic way for you to get more benefit out of your probiotic. In my opinion, and this would have to be studied to uh, have uh, research and to have it be proven, but my hypothesis is probiotics do better when they are accompanied with fermented foods that they agree with. Eating an l type of supplement and consuming it with regular yogurt, where the l does also eat the lactose, galactose, and glucose, I think is a great way to, as you take this, and you eat your yogurt, when both of them are, uh, get to your gut microbiome, they play together nicely. And so it's an easier way for you to get your probiotic, that's so helpful, and amplify its helpfulness in the gut. You amplify its potential for it to help you. But taking this all on its own with a glass of water, I think would be less effective, but you know, that would ha that's my hypothesis. That would be something that we would have to study to figure out, but uh, I, I digress. All right, so I hope you found this video on optimizing probiotics for your ferments helpful. If you have questions, comments, concerns, please ask in the comment section below. And I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. Once again, my name is Matthew Cress of Cress Dietetics, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.